Hi, and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, Saturday, uh, we're going to take a look at the deadly rated killer Sudoku, uh, which tends to be the form on Saturdays. And we obviously can't do the Times crossword on Saturdays because that's a prize, prize puzzle. Um, and we don't want to ruin that. Uh, so here it is. Let's have a quick look. Um, okay, so the first thing my eyes are drawn to is this square. This square we can write in. Uh, immediately. Um, why do I say that? Well, you have to remember when you solve Killer Sudoku, the most important number by far is the number 45. And that's because we know that every row, every column, and every 3x3 box in the complete solution will add up to 45 because it will contain the numbers from 1 to 9 exactly once each. If we add the numbers 1 to 9, we get 45. So let's apply that principle to row 9 of the grid here. You can see we already have a 14, a 10, that's 24, and a 12 entirely contained within this row. So these numbers add to 36. Therefore, these two numbers here have to add to 9. Now, this box is 13 altogether. So in fact, this must be a 4. We can write that in. Now, there's a couple of other things I can see here. We've got some boxes that are sort of given, or in the sense that they're restricted to very few options. So this 4 box here can only be a 1 and a 3. And now this 8 box can only be a 2 and a 6. There are three ways of making 8 in two cells, if you like. It could be 1, 7, 3, 5, or 2, 6. And you can see that two of those are used up by this 4 box appearing in the same column. 17 in 2, that has to be 8 and 9. So we're left now with having to place a 5 and a 7 in the open cells of column 1. And in fact that's immediately going to force a contradiction in this cell. Because if this was a 5, this cell would have to be a 4, and then there would be two 4s There'd be two fours in the cage, which already breaches the conditions of Killer Sudoku. There'd also be two fours in this 3x3 three three box. So this can't be a 5, this has to be a 7. Um, that means this has to be a 2, and this can be a 5. That means these two cells now sum to 14. Well, we can't quite tell how yet, but the next place my eyes would be drawn would be this 8 box. And the reason I say that is that we have now have 2 in the same column. Um, and 8 in 3 cells can be either 1, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 5. And now one of those alternatives is completely uh, impossible because of the presence of this 2. So this has to be 1, 3, 4. And you can actually see that because there's a 4 here, in fact, this cell has to be a 4. And these two cells would have to be 1 and 3 in some combination. And we can do some uh, nice Sudoku logic now. Because you can see we've got this 1, 3 from the 4 box up here. And this 1, 3 from this 8 box. Now that means that we have to place the numbers 1 and 3 in the right hand side of this 3x3 three three box in column 3. But this cell here is a, is a 16 uh, in 2, so that, that can only be 7 and 9, in fact, because there's a 7 here. This cell has to be 7, and this has to be 9. But now these two cells here have to be 1 and 3 in some order. And that's really helpful. Now this cell has to be 8. And we know that these two cells here have to sum up to uh, 14 but the only cell now that can take a 2 in this whole box is this one so we should write that in this is 2 this is 6 and now you can see there needs to be a 6 in one of these two cells so this in fact is going to be 6 8 6 8 and this has to be 9, this has to be 8, and this has to be uh, 5, 6 now in these two cells here. 
which means this is 2, 3, and this is 8, 9. So you can see that we've just, we haven't done anything clever apart from just use the, um, the limitations in the cages that we've been given. We haven't had to use the geometry in any special way. Um, if these are 2 and 4, these two have to be 8 and 9 because this, these two cells have to sum to 17. <coughs> and now we're looking at 5, 7 and 9 down the central column. So that's 5, 7, this is 5, 7, 9, and this is 5, 7, 9. Okay. Again, I would take a quick look at the arithmetic in this 3x3 three three cage because I've already got 17 here and I've got 13 here. So that's a lot of a lot of digits already used up. In fact, this 13 would have to be a 6 and a 7 because the 4, 9 and the 5, 8 ways of making 13 in two cells are already used up. And we have a 6 here. So this has to be a 6 and this has to be a 7. And now this 8, again, has to be 3, 5, because it's the only way of making 8 that's valid that's left. So in fact, we've filled these cells now. We now know these th three cells are 1, 2, and 4 in some combination. This. Okay, we have another box here that's sort of a given, this 3 has to be 1 and 2. Um, and again, we can use a similar trick here. You're slightly using the geometry and slightly using the arithmetic. Have a look at these cells. But um, again, these two cells, we can, we can work out the value of them. And we can work out the value of these two cells as well. But the reason I say that is we now know these three cells, the ones where the cursor is now, they sum to 7. So I know that these three cells sum to 18, because these two, the cages here, 18 and 7, sum to 25. So if I remove 7 from that, I get back to 18 again. So I've got 18 here, plus 21 is 39. So I know these two cells sum to 6 again. Now, what does that mean? Well, one of the things it means, there are two ways of making 6 in two cells. One of them is 1 and 5, and one of them is 2 and 4. But one of those possibilities is impossible now because of the contents of row 3 already. And I'll show you what I mean. If these were 2 and 4, then this cell would have to be a 1, and this cell would have to be a 1. So that's clearly impossible. 2, 4 is not a valid combination here anymore. So 1 and 5 is the only way that's going to work, which means this is a 1. And all sorts of things are going to be flowing from this. That's a 3, and this is a 5. This now has to be a 9. This has to be a 7, and this has to be a 5. Okay. We've got exactly the same arithmetic down this side that we had over this side. So we have this side we had a 2 and a 4, which left an 8 and a 9 in a 23 cage. Here we've just got a 1 and a 5, which leaves 17 for these two cells. So again, we know this has to be 8 and 9. And there, I think there are lots of ways to make progress from here, but one of the ways that you could do it quite quickly is to look at row 8 of the grid. And the reason I look at row 8 is that I, I've already got six numbers in here that are already com that are contained completely within cages within row 8. You can see we've got a 4 here, plus an 8, plus 22. So those, those six cages, or so six boxes, if you like, add up to 34, which means that these three boxes, my cursor's going here, have to sum to 11. Now we can quickly see here that if I conjecture that this cell is a 1, this cell would be forced to be a 2, and this cell would be forced to be an 8. Well, 8 is ca that cannot be an 8 because we already have an 8 in column 9, 
So this cell cannot be a 1. It has to be a 3. This has to be a 1, which means this has to be a 1 and this has to be a 2. We know these three cells sum to 11, so this has to be a 7 now. And now you can see these two cells here have to sum to 11 without using a 7, 8 or a 9. Now the only way that's possible is if these two are 5 and 6 in some combination. Both are still possible at this point, but <coughs> there we go. Now this 22 box now is forced because we already have a 7 in the row. So again, it's important that you learn these combinations. If you're certainly if you want to get speedy at solving the harder killer Sudokus, you need to know that 22 can only be made in two ways. That's 5, 8, and 9, and 6, 7, and 9. So you can immediately now know this is 5, 8, and 9 in some combination, which means this has to be a 6, this has to be a 2, this is a 5, and this is a 9. Now any 22 cage in three cells will always contain a 9. So we can now fill a 9 in here. We know these two cells are 5 and 8 in some combination. So I would notate that like that. Now this 12 box again is forced in the sense that it has to be 4 and 8 because we already have a 7 and a 9 in the in the 3 by 3 box. So the 8 has to go here and this has to be a 4. And what are we left with? We're left, we're left with having to place 3, 5 and 6. Uh, okay, so this could be a 3 or a 6. And this could be 3, 5 or 6. And again, if we scan up column 9 now, you can see that this, because of these 5 and 6 here, this has to be a 1. And this has to be a 5. And also you can see here that this can no longer be a 2. And if this is a 2, this would have to be a 7-9 combination. And now we've got a 9 here that prevents that from being valid. So that, this is going to have to be a 4. It's going to be a 2, it's going to be a 4, uh, like that. You see now you can, it's going to be a 4 in one of these two cells by just simple Sudoku logic. That's, I mean, the puzzle's really almost done now in terms of, I don't think there's going to be too much more to, to find. These two cells have to be 14, we already have a 5 in the 3x3 three three box. So this has to be 6 and 8. It's going to be like that. 6 and 8. Now this 6 is forced over here. This has to be a 5. This has to be a 3. And this has to be a 5. So we're looking at 1, 2, 7 down here now. Which means this can only be a 2. If, if this was a 7, well, it would clash with that. And if this was a 1, this would be a 7, because these two cells need to sum to 8. So this is going to have to be a 2. These two cells are 1 and 7 in some combination. Now we know there's a 4 in this box as well. So in fact, we actually know that the complete contents, if you like, of this 15 cage now, because We've already got 8 here, plus 4 is 12, so we know we need a 3 in order to make that work. Could have found that out from these two as well. We know this has to be a 6 in order to make this box work. Okay, and we're very nearly there. Um, so we're looking for 3, 4, 7 along here, which means that we need a 3 into this box like that. Seven like this. This has to be one and six, which means it has to be this way round. One and six like that. Okay, we know we needed a one over in these three squares, so that can only appear now in this position here. Um, which means these two cells have to sum to ten, which means this has to be a seven. That has to be a seven. That has to be a three. This has to be an eight. This has to be a four, and this has to be a three. 
So you may say, you know, what what did we do that was particularly clever in order to solve this puzzle? I don't I don't think there was terribly, you know, there was there was anything much that we that we did. Uh, all we did was just use some fairly straightforward logic and the geometry of the grid in order to to break it open. And once these things break open, you tend to find that they they fall apart fairly quickly. Um, so we're looking for 7 and 9 in these two cells here, that sums to 16. Therefore these two have to sum to 6 again. We already have a 1 in the cage or in the 3x3 three three box, so this has to be 2 and 4 in some order. Therefore this has to be 4, this has to be 2. See up here that the 9 and 8 are already resolved. This has to be 5 and 6 now, which can only go this way round. And there we go, the puzzle is now finally giving up all its secrets. Um, so I'll need a 9 in this box. This has to be a 7. 7, 1, 1, 3, 3. Cool. And thanks for watching, and I hope this was uh, a useful run through how to solve one of these very hard Kalisidokus.